My name is Mara Salvato. I am Italian, but I'm working in Germany. In the last eight years, I am working at Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics. And I'm mostly in my career, I was focusing on objects, galaxies that host and active black holes. These are called AGNs. And I am working for a mission that is called Erosita, that is actually focusing on this kind of objects. As I was mentioning before, AGNs are galaxies that have an active black hole uh, in the center. And I think that what is important to remind to all of us is that until 30 years ago, 25 years ago, actually, uh, there were two groups of scientists, those that were working on galaxies and those that were working on black holes, AGNs, and uh, they were not speaking to each other. And actually, the people working on galaxies were removing categorically all the objects with uh, an AGN, and they really did not want to have this object in it. And 25 years ago, instead, we found out that uh, essentially in every galaxy there is a black hole, and it's simply a sleeping, dormant, and not active. And so we had to change completely our paradigm, and for the first time we realized that galaxies with a black hole cannot be isolated from the rest of the galaxies because uh, there is a black hole, sometimes it's awake, sometimes it's not. And this can become important in understanding galaxy evolution in general. So all the work that is done now, in addition to uh, study the physics of the black hole, is really try to understand how galaxies with the awake black hole are uh, comparable to the galaxy with the black hole that is sleeping. Uh, Erosita, as you say, it is an amazing project. It's an X-ray instrument formed by seven telescopes. It is a, a German instrument flying on a Russian satellite. And uh, the goal is to uh, make uh, all sky surveys uh, um, so that we can map uh, at these wavelengths the entire sky. The previous all sky survey was done by Rosat about 35 years ago. Erosita um, has the plan to make eight all sky surveys so that you can compare the surveys with each other and in this way learn about objects that are changing in nature, so uh, things that are popping up or um, disappearing. Adding all these surveys together, you are going to have a much deeper uh, data for discovering objects that are much fainter or much farther away from us. The fact that we are making all sky surveys is allowing us to detect rare objects that cannot be detected if you are focusing in a small portion of the sky because these objects are um, happening very fast and there are very few in the entire sky, so you need to have an all sky to measure the few that are happening. And because we are repeating the observations, we are sensitive to the transient sky. So in every image that we are taking, you can really see objects that were in one image and not in the other, or they are fa were faint and then they become brighter and, and so on. I don't know if you are familiar with the Fermi bubbles. These are shaped, elongated lobes that are coming out from the center of our galaxy. They were discovered first in uh, the high energy with Fermi. And now with Erosita, we found that they are perfectly aligned with uh, a bubbles that are seen by Erosita. And uh, this is uh, suggesting a possible uh, old activity of the black hole in our galaxy. The discovery of the Erosita bubbles is just an example of what Erosita can do in the study of the uh, background on the entire galaxy. So we are ready now to explain this uh, X-ray background, which is the value of the X-ray flux after you have removed all the sources that you can see. So it's really something which we are immersed and not the radiation coming from specific objects that we see. They can be stars, they could be um, clusters, they could be AGNs. So after you removed all of these, uh, you try to understand what is uh, the background, what is the, the remaining there. The other gigantic discovery is uh, uh, happening in uh, these uh, transients where we are uh, able, with a repeated observation, to discover uh, objects that were unknown before. So uh, this is the case, for example, of uh, quasi-periodic um, eruptions. They were uh, um, discovered, were a couple discovered uh, in, uh, before the Erosita launch, and uh, Erosita now is funding them uh, in larger number. 
and uh, we are still trying to understand what is generating these eruptions, but they are definitely a new population of objects that um, until three years ago were uh, unexpected. Uh, we were able uh, to um, confirm some uh, theoretical model of, uh, um, how, that has tried to explain how stars explode in the nova uh, phase. Uh, about 30 years ago, a mod that was able to explain how these uh, nova stars explode. And it happens instead last year uh, that a nova exploded right when Hiroshima was passing. And it is amazing to see in an image there is no X-ray emission. In the next, uh, there is the entire uh, CAM CCD completely saturated. And then an image after, four hours later, there is again nothing. And this is associated with an over event. And so we could model and confirm this theory that was uh, uh, presented 30 years in advance. Alone, Irosita can do little, I would like to say. I think it is an important point to remember. Uh, you always need the support of other multi-wavelengths. So in X-ray, you can detect the explosive event or the energetic event. But if you don't combine it with optical data, radio data, and other wavelengths or infrared, you do not really know which type of object was emitting, uh, what is, uh, uh, whether there is dust in the galaxy, whether there is uh, uh, other events happening. So the information for the study of galaxy evolution comes only if you combine X-ray with everything else. It gives you a mean to detect special sources that otherwise you will ignore, but then you need to combine with everything else in order to do science. Uh, we are really trying to understand how the, how the connection between the galaxy and the active black hole is working, whether the black hole is uh, influencing the galaxy enough and for long enough to be uh, important uh, or not. Uh, so far, for understanding how the connection uh, was done, we were limited to uh, samples that were either too small or uh, uh, biased, and we were missing a large number of objects selected in an unbiased way, in a completely clean way, and uh, Erosita is actually providing that. Already after the first six months of survey, we had more than the all the AGNs that were ever detected in 20 years of X-ray astronomy with Chandra and XMM. Just in six months, more than one million AGNs, and we are going to get uh, eight times deeper at the end of the mission. So finally, we have a really a gigantic number of AGNs at different distance with different power in different hosts. And finally, from the statistical approach, we will be able to understand really how the connection is working. So this is my uh, wish list, if you like, for understanding how AGNs and galaxies are connected, but again, together with other data and not with uh, Erosita alone.